a section of this video supported by Curiosity Stream. One of the central questions I often ask myself is how to make sense of Tesla when it comes to its valuation. Personally, I'm not an expert in American stocks or stocks anywhere, but I am reasonably informed when it comes to technology. Therefore, that is always the starting point of any analysis on this channel. Recently, Tesla's valuation has hit its all-time high, punching above its weight and is now reaching around $100 billion. But for most of us, $100 billion is just a number. We know it's a lot. We know it's more than any of us can spend in our lifetime. We're inspired by Tesla's story and vision. We're awed by what Tesla is able to achieve with technology. But other than that, it's meaningless to us. So that's what I want to do today, to help myself and all of you to understand what it means for Tesla to be worth $100 billion. First of all, we need to put Tesla into the industry it's in, to give it some context. Let's start with the big traditional players in the auto market, Toyota, GM, and Volkswagen. If we look at raw numbers, Tesla's valuation might be odd at first. All of the above mentioned companies produce over 10 million cars per year, except for Tesla, which made around 500,000 cars in 2019. Yet Tesla is worth more than GM, Ford, and Honda. Volkswagen is an $100 billion company, and Toyota, the most successful of the bunch, is worth around $200 billion. Tesla should not be worth 100 B from this perspective, yet it is. Then we dig deeper into the numbers. Why is Toyota worth so much more than GM while not making proportionally more cars? The reason is pretty straightforward. Toyota makes disproportionately more money. Although Toyota made 10 million cars while GM made 7 million, Toyota made 130%. 130% more profit than GM. This is due to Toyota's better supply chain management. Toyota is famous for outsourcing its component production so as to specialize and lower the cost of production. This is quite the opposite to Tesla, which believes in vertical integration, of course. Nevertheless, Toyota makes a lot more than GM and therefore is worth more money. This is common sense. Now, moving on to Volkswagen. Similar performance can be found where it makes 50% more than GM every year. Some other numbers we might want to look at is the PE ratio, cash flow, dividend, so on and so forth. These are easily understandable metrics, but these still do not explain why Tesla is worse more than GM when it does not make even a profit. So why am I talking about this? I'm raising these examples to make one point that companies with better technology and management have better valuations because in the long term, it will be able to make higher profits. This is what touches the core of the Tesla question. Technology and patents are the core competency of auto companies. Tesla should enjoy better valuation because of its strategic position in the EV industry. Put it simply, how much power does a company have that can prevent newcomers from copying what they do? Here's an example. One of the most successful Chinese EV companies is NIO. They make $60,000 electric SUVs, but it outsources car production to JAC, battery production to CATL, autonomous driving system to Mobileye, which is a subsidiary of Intel, and keeps its own battery pack design and software algorithm. After failing to build its own manufacturing plant in Shanghai in 2018, it has significantly less leverage than Tesla when it comes to production. We all know that Tesla manages its own production and autonomous driving systems, including even the processing unit. However, I must say, NIO is doing a good job with their cars, albeit not as well as Tesla. It is a latecomer founded in 2014 and is still a strong competitor in the market, having spent over $1.4 billion on R&D to build their own systems. It's going to be a formidable company, but my point still stands. Tesla's success will continue because it's key investment into the EV technologies very early on. This leads me to explain further the paradigm shift in the auto market. Traditionally, car companies derive their core competency from engine production. Oftentimes, ICE cars can consist up to 20,000 components because gasoline engines are complex and hard to make. Those with more gasoline engine patents make better and more fuel efficient cars and make more money as a result. 
But in the EVH, engine consists significantly less components and leapfrogs those gasoline engine patents. Therefore, in an EVH, auto companies' core technology is shifting elsewhere to battery, control, and autonomous driving systems. Under autonomous driving systems, specifically its chipsets and sensors, all of which Tesla dominates. Going back to the three auto giants, Toyota, Volkswagen, and GM, they all have given up those core competencies, partnering away their core competency in the EV market. Here are some of the recent headlines. Volkswagen partnering with CATL on battery, Toyota, Honda partnering with Nvidia on autonomous driving, Toyota partners with Panasonic on battery technology, so on and so forth. So if we see battery, automation, manufacturing as three critical competencies in the EV age, Tesla is not only the only one that checks all the boxes, it is leading in these dimensions. This is what fundamentally makes Tesla great and worth of its $100 billion valuation. Putting aside the discussions on valuation, what do I think of Tesla as a company? Based on the assumption that EV is the future, I do not see any possibility of Tesla not doing better. It is so strategically positioned in all aspects of EV production that puts Tesla far ahead of any competitors in the market. Take a look at Tesla's EV competitors. They look terrible. It's as if those companies aren't even trying. On top of that, I want to talk about Tesla's China factor. I've talked about this many times because uh, it is a very important factor for Tesla. Personally, I have not seen the Chinese government go out of their way to help a foreign company like they did for Tesla. I mean, here we are talking about Tesla's production in Shanghai. The factory was built in a year and is paid for by the Chinese banks at a very low interest rate of 3.9% if my memory serves me right, which means Tesla basically got the money for free considering inflation. Not even local Chinese automakers enjoy this kind of treatment. Why would you think the Shanghai government do that? Well, here's what I think. China has been the biggest investor in renewable energy and has been for years. They have realized the effect of climate change, fossil-based growth is not sustainable for Tesla and they have to prepare early. EV is a critical part of that strategy. In other words, China has bought Elon's vision for, for an electric future years ago. But what she realized after subsidizing local EV companies with billions of cash is that Real competition must be brought into China to force local EV companies to be globally competitive. That's the reason behind Tesla's success in the Chinese market. And if this analysis is right, it's a great news for Tesla and all of us who support it, because China considers its own self-interest to have a successful Tesla. Lastly, I do want to have a few words of caution. Coming back to the stock, I think Tesla could worth much more than 100 billion in the future, but the skyrocketing rise of Tesla stock is extremely unusual and not necessarily a good thing for Tesla, doubling its stock in just three months and tripling its stock in less than a year. I think there is a good amount of speculation going on. For those of you who are thinking of investing in the stock or, are, or have already invested, just be careful. This section is supported by Curiosity Stream, a subscription streaming service that offers thousands of award-winning documentaries. If you like tech analysis on this channel, there are many more documentaries discovering the nature of science and technology on Curiosity Stream. Recently, I got some time to sit down and watch this collection on the rise of machines. I must say, I'm impressed by the depth of many episodes covering topics on AI. We all know the potential of AI and automation, but seldom do we go deep into the intricacies of combining AI with our own brain. Not to mention the episodes on the evolution of humans. A lot more exciting projects are being built around the world, and many of them are documented on Curiosity Stream. So check them out on curiositystream.com slash curious elephant. Lastly, Curiosity Stream offers our audiences one month free trial as long as you sign up with a link down below with the code curious elephant. Once your free trial is up, they charge $19.99 a year, which is only $1.67 a month. Another great news for our audience right now is that the annual subscription of Curiosity Stream also comes with free Nebula, a streaming video platform built by and for independent creators like CGP Grey, Minute Physics, Wendover, and myself. There are many exciting exclusive contents on Nebula, so sign up for Curiosity Stream to try out both platforms today. Also, Here's a list of people that I owe a big thank you to. Fernando Morales, Sammy Jacobi, Daniel Hendricks, Dave Martin, Hervasca, Ahilash, Arhi, 
Ahilash Nabia, hopefully I didn't butcher that name too much, LA, Chen Friedman, thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. It's a tremendous encouragement.